Welcome back to the report. One of the most intriguing moons in our solar system is Enceladus, a small icy moon of Saturn that continues to defy expectations. For decades, scientists assumed that moons that small should be geologically dead. And yet Enceladus is one of the most active bodies in our solar system. First discovered during the Cassini mission, this tiny moon shoots massive geysers into space, forming an entire ring around Saturn. Now, scientists say that these eruptions have been occurring for millions or even billions of years. But hey, if that were true, shouldn't Enceladus have lost most of its material by now? Joining us to discuss this stunning evidence for a young, active moon is David Coppage. David has been a science journalist in Southern California for almost 25 years. He worked at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory for 14 years, where he was the team lead system administrator for the Cassini mission to Saturn during its heyday of major discoveries. He's a board member of Illustra Media and serves as their science consultant. David, it is great to have you back on the report. Good to be back with you, David. How are you? I am doing fantastic. I don't know if I could be doing better right now. Uh, it is great to have you to address this topic because you had a front row seat uh, at JPL when the Cassini spacecraft is flying past Enceladus and it's, and it's seeing these remarkable things, right? Yes, it was a great honor to be there uh, during these the heyday of great discoveries by Cassini. And I got to mingle with the world's greatest planetary scientists and, uh, and be among the first to see the images coming in of Enceladus uh, when the geysers were discovered. So that was a great honor. Well, you know, uh, when we think about moons or, or uh, satellites of planets, we obviously think of our moon. But our moon is the largest moon proportionally of all the moons in the solar system. We've got about a, a quarter of the size of the Earth for our moon. And so I'm thinking this icy planet with these water spouts and all, well, I mean, how, how big is Enceladus? Is it kind of like, you know, a quarter the size of its host planet? It's only about 300 miles wide, which is about the width of Iowa or Arizona. Wow. Okay, so, you know, how can this little tiny moon be putting out so much activity for billions of years? It just doesn't make any sense. So uh, it's putting out uh, material at Mach 5, five times the speed of sound, about 300 kilograms per second, which is enough to fill an Olympic swimming pool in about a couple of hours. So it's putting out a lot of material. And like you said, it creates a whole ring around Saturn, the E-ring. Now, you know, back in the 1980s, when Voyager 1 and 2 flew by Enceladus, they knew something weird was going on because... Uh, Enceladus is the brightest body in the solar system. It reflects almost all of the light that hits it. And so how is that possible? Well, it's being spray painted by, by its own geysers. The material that we found on July um, 7th of 2005, July 14th, I think it was, uh, that material comes out. Some of it falls back onto Enceladus and creates fresh ice. And some of that uh, material also blasts the nearby moons like Tethys and Dione, and and so it's it's a very active moon. It's only one of four in the solar system that has surface activity. The Earth being one, and Io, uh, which I discussed with you in a previous broadcast, and uh, Triton at Neptune has nitrogen geysers going off. But Enceladus is the smallest. It's a tiny little moon, and it has all this activity. So you got to ask yourself, how long could this be going on at this rate? Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense if these moons were created millions or billions of years ago. And, and yet we're told we are spoon fed in astronomy courses that most of the bodies of the solar system are approximately four and a half billion years old. So there are mm -hmm. questions within there, but I, I want to go a little bit deeper before we go there. The, these geysers are expelling massive amounts of material at high speeds. Um, how does this compare to something like Yellowstone's hot springs uh, where you see those, those things happening? Yes, it's, uh, they've done comparisons of that. And Enceladus puts out 15.8 gigawatts of power. That's about 2.6 times as much as all of the Yellowstone hot springs put together. Wow. And so that's a tremendous amount of energy coming out of this little moon. And so that can't have been going on for a long time. Now, did you say that the, the so much material is ejected from this tiny little moon that it actually forms its own ring around Saturn? 
Yes, the E-ring is a broad ring, and it happens that Enceladus is right in the densest part of it. So they suspected some kind of connection between the E-ring and Enceladus, but it wasn't until we discovered the geysers there that they had a mechanism to explain that. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, think about that, putting out that much material. And we also saw on the way in, as we were uh, passing Phoebe and coming in for the a close encounter with Saturn to be captured by its gravity, they saw a huge outburst of Enceladus. Uh, they measured it in oxygen from the ultraviolet spectrometer. And this, it was like uh, the total amount of material uh, in the whole E-ring was coming out in one episode. So if this happens regularly, by the way, there was another outburst that was measured by the James Webb Space Telescope. Uh, uh, just a, a month or two ago. And so it, it found a plume of Enceladus that was 6,000 miles long, wow. <laughs> which is pretty astonishing, making it look like a comet or something, uh, considering a moon that's only 300 miles wide. So there are brief periods of great outbursts in addition to the steady state of, of 300 kilograms per second coming out of those geysers. Yeah, now you're watching this almost, not, not quite in real time, but you're watching it as the images come in from the Cassini mission. What kind of um, arrays were on Cassini? It was able to photograph things with visible light? Did it have any other types of uh, sensors on it that's pulling all of this data? Uh, yes, uh, Cassini was loaded with all kinds of instruments. It could do infrared, it could do ultraviolet, and it even flew through the plumes in some of the later encounters and gathered materials that it could use with its mass spectrometer. So they determined that it, it's mostly water ice, but there's also some uh, ammonia, uh, some silicates, uh, a little bit of carbon dioxide, but mostly water ice that's coming out of these plumes. And the Cassini, uh, you got to hand it to the navigators flying this thing because they were from 800 million miles away. They're flying 32,000 miles per hour at just 50 miles above the surface of this moon. So that's a, an amazing achievement. It absolutely is. Now, some scientists have proposed that tidal flexing or the gravitational pull from Saturn uh, somehow repowers all of the heat that's needed for this. But you've pointed out that there might be a, a flaw in this line of thinking. What is that? Well, yeah, uh, that's the usual explanation that the science programs and um, documentaries say that, well, it's just being squeezed like a rubber ball and that's what gives the heat. But uh, it's not enough. It's, it's too low by orders of magnitude. And when you consider that you know, all of the water on Earth has been powered through these geysers over four and a half billion years. Uh, the moon would have lost a tremendous amount of mass uh, over this time. You know, a substantial part of its entire mass would have to melt and go through these geysers, which is unreasonable. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's just another evidence that these plumes are young and not old. So uh, I think one of the biggest contradictions in secular, between secular astronomy and real astronomy, astronomy that's following data, is that we keep finding these moons, these planets, these features throughout our solar system, throughout our galaxy, uh, throughout the universe that appear far younger than previously expected. Why do you think that mainstream science continues to resist this idea that Enceladus, yeah, well, the reason it hasn't run out of energy or the fuel to, to create these things is because it's not as old as you think. Why, why are they so resistant? Well, I think uh, they're committed Darwinists, most of them, and uh, Darwin needs the time, you know, to evolve brains from bacteria. At least they think so. Now, we know better. We know it <laughs> quadrillions of years is not enough. But uh, if they don't have the time, then you've got to consider other causes for the origins of these bodies. And, you know, we have intelligent design as a cause, and certainly the best intelligent designer is God himself, the God of Genesis, who told us what he did. And so why not accept that? You know, deep time is not a solution to the evolutionist problems. In fact, deep time is the problem, and the scientific evidence does not support what they're saying. And, David, uh, no matter how much time you give it, evolution is still an impossibility. It's pseudoscience because you have to break 
scientific principles to create life from non-life, matter from nothing, uh, and we could go on and on and on. But you talk about this all the time. For those who want to learn more, you can check out David's articles at Creation Evolution Headlines, um, crev.info. Hopefully this is at the bottom of the screen, but crev.info. I would encourage you to go check out his website. You can always find more of these breaking news headlines and how everything is pointing right back to the validity of God's Word. Now, your book, David, Spacecraft Earth, A Guide for Passengers, it was co-authored with uh, Dr. Henry Richter. Um, I've read it. It is amazing. Uh, you can pick one of those uh, up at the Creation Superstore by visiting creationsuperstore.com. Uh, it really does kind of take you through uh, the universe and our special earth. I would highly encourage it. David Coppich, thank you again so much for being on the program. And um, what would you like to leave guests with uh, as we conclude? Well, God has created a wonderful solar system for us to enjoy, and the more we look at other moons in the solar system, the more we appreciate how beautifully designed our Earth is. <laughs> so, so true. Thank you so much. We are out of time, but I don't want you to go anywhere because we're going to be right back with viewer voices and so much more after the break. <laughs> 